Hello and welcome to Hispanic Agenda, Washington's only bilingual news program. I'm Alejandro Negron. Thanks for watching. On today's agenda, Peruvian and Cuban chef Victor Albizu shares a recipe that you'll want to include in your next asado. Plus, I'll talk to Telemundo Washington's sports anchor Moises Linares about what many say were long-awaited indictments of FIFA officials. But first, another blow to President Obama's executive actions on immigration and to the millions of undocumented immigrants hoping to receive deportation relief, this time by the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. The legal details are complicated. Let's sort through them with immigration attorney and legal director of Caresin, Andrea Rodriguez, and George Escobar, senior director of human services at Casa de Maryland. Welcome both to Hispanic Agenda. Welcome back. Thank, Thank you, Alejandro. You all right, so this is for all of us who are not lawyers, uh, the legal details are, are complicated. So what yes. exactly uh, happened? The, the, this court didn't rule on the executive actions, correct? Correct. It what did, did they rule on? Well, what we have to realize is that there's three different levels to this case. And so the court um, ruled that the emergency stay that the president requested um, was, they, they did not grant the emergency stay. Right. So, um, so the emergency remember, stay was. Yeah, the emergency stay was was not granted. So, a few months back in February, when the um, Fifth Circuit District Judge um, Judge Hainan, um created an injunction, right? Mm -hmm. He ordered the injunction. The administration prompt, promptly requested an emergency stay. Uh, the same judge. Uh, denied the emergency stay and that was appealed. So what was denied yesterday was the appeal of the emergency stay. It was not based on the merits. Now both of you were here last time we were speaking about this, about the decision by uh, Judge Andrew uh, Hainan. Yes. And you both felt that the executive actions uh, had a good uh, chance at the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, apparently the, that court ruled against itself. Could you guys uh, explain? Well, in, in this particular court, you know, there were three judges. Two of the judges um, decided not to continue, you know, not, not to grant the stay. One judge did dissent. So, you know, they were, you know, different judges. Um, mm. It was not all of the circuit judges that, that decided. Um, but uh, they, the basis of the ruling was that they felt that Texas would face injury. Um, based on the driver's licenses issue, that they would be mandated to change their policy and their driver's license and either charging more to uh, residents in mm -hmm. uh, applying for a driver's license or changing some type of policy. And that was the real basis of finding that Texas would okay. face injury and that was the reason why they um, did not grant the stay of the injunction. All right, George, so mm -hmm. what happens now? Well, I think, um, first of all, I think it's, it's uh, important to clarify that as an immigrant advocacy community, we nationally pressured the president to go after every legal uh, tool and resource at to, that's available to him to go after. This includes a lot of these minor procedural processes, which actually uh, uh, affected the decision on Tuesday, right? That was the stay of the uh, emergency stay of the injunction. It was only one tool at his disposal. Uh, the big hearing on the actual appeal of the injunction mm -hmm. before the entire panel of the 17 judges in the fifth in the fifth circuit will take place in July. Now that will be uh, that will be the day in which we're going to see an entire hearing um, with 35 plus attorneys, I believe, on both sides, where we're going to hear the argument for Texas, and we're going to hear th those states that are in favor and those states, cities jurisdictions that are in favor of moving forward with the injunction, mm -hmm. their day in court. This stay of the injunction hearing, was it was about a two-hour hearing back in April. Okay. So it's a minor procedural effort. It's really important to understand that so that people don't um, don't confuse the fact that this is uh, that this this um, action by a panel of only three judges, two of which were Republican. One was um, appointed by President Reagan. The other one was appointed by President Bush. Mm -hmm. It was a minor procedural um, process. Now, do you guys feel that we have to uh, go back and the question, I guess, assumes that, that we've stopped, uh, but seeking a, a broader immigration reform? 
uh, through the process, through Congress and signed by the executive, something that will stick instead of these band-aids that, you know, raise the, the hopes, I guess, of, of those who are undocumented. But now they're, you know, waiting and feeling that at any moment they could be deported. Well, a broader immigration reform has always been needed, and, and that's always been advocated because, of course, what executive action provided was a reprieve to certain groups of people, you know, which were, you know, parents of U.S. citizens and residents, and then um, youths. It was expanded um, benefits to youths who had entered um, before the age of 16 um, and before a certain date, right? But yes, there is, of course, a need of broader immigration reform. Um, At the end of the day, that's what's going to solve. Uh, the issue. Yes. All right. All right. Well, I want to thank you uh, both for your time, and we'll have you back uh, in well before July. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm sure. Thank you so much, thank Andrea you. Rodriguez thank and George Escobar. All right. Coming up on Hispanic Agenda: Finding Justice for the Young Latina Victim of a Horrific Crime. You don't want to miss a special report by Jeanette Reyes. Coming up next here on Hispanic Agenda. Welcome back to Hispanic Agenda, I'm Alejandro Negron. Local police and the family of a young Latina who was murdered over a year ago in Woodbridge need your help in solving a case that is still very much part of the day-to-day -day conversation in that community. Jeanette Reyes is here with more. Jeanette. Well, Alejandro, it was a horrific crime that shocked the city of Woodbridge. Two employees gunned down inside a small family grocery store. One of them, a mother, died. The other is speaking out for the very first time, helping police find the killers. On Route 1 in Woodridge is a billboard thousands drive by every day. When I see the, the picture of my daughter, so my eyes, eyes cry. On it, a picture of a smiling 21-year-old Marisol Coca Romero and a plea for help to find her killers. It's like unforgettable. This 42-year-old woman, Coca Romero's co-worker and friend, is speaking out for the first time since masked men walked into the Platanillos grocery store in February of last year. The men opened fire. Coca Romero was shot in the head and killed. Yo vi a ella a mi lado. I saw Marisol right next to me, touched her legs, and she was talking to her, but she wasn't responding. She was shot in the stomach and critically wounded. Sentí muy, muy Hot feliz. feeling, something that burnt, then cold. Fearing she would die from her wounds, she called her kids and said her goodbyes. It took several days before she knew her friend was dead. Every day I asked about her and nobody wanted to tell me. I come in when I come to the manasa, so I think my daddy died. Coca Romero's father vividly remembers the moment he got the news. They killed your daughter. That was very hard. He says he often worries about Coca Romero's daughter, now two years old. I want to die, but I can't because I still have her daughter. Mama. Prince William Mama. County detectives are bent upon solving the case, even bringing in the FBI. We're here to, to seek justice for all and uh, that applies to immigrant communities. But it'll be tough to break this case in a community that is often hesitant to talk to the police when it comes to crime, much less a brutal murder with three killers still on the streets. But detectives and Coca Romero's family hope a picture of this young mother will be enough for someone to muster up the courage to speak up. They can do it to other people, just like what they did to, to us. And with the FBI's help, authorities are offering a $21,000 reward to anyone with information that may lead to an arrest. It's just a horrible story. It's definitely yeah. a horrible story. Now, like you said in, in your report, this is a community that usually has a hard time communicating with police, or so the police has a hard time communicating with this community, mostly because of fears of immigration and, uh, and deportation. Now, my understanding is that the police were able to get many tips uh, when this f case first uh, uh, broke. Right. But I guess they got lost in translation. Exactly. The the good thing about this this case is that there were a lot of people. Calls came pouring in with tips, but they didn't have a translator on hand to translate those tips, or at least it wasn't recorded. And so they're asking people to call in again, even if you did call 
call in again and say what you know because someone knows something. Someone knows, someone knows what something. happened. Right. And if you could just call in again and give whatever information you can, however minor you think it is, that might just lead to a break in this case. Now, I know that at the beginning of the case, the police uh, were investigating the... Uh, the husband or the ex uh, boyfriend, even right. uh, an FBI team went down, I, I understand, to, to Mexico. Mexico. Right. They Did were, they rule that out? They ruled that out. And the reason why they thought possibly it may have been a hit or something like that is because it took three seconds. They came in, they shot the two women, and they left. And nothing was taken. Money wasn't taken. No, no belongings were taken. And that they found that suspicious. It wasn't a robbery. So uh, they might be close, but at this point, all they're asking is that people call in and give those tips again. And hopefully we can add some life to this, this case. It's kind of surprising that a city like Woodbridge that has such a right. uh, large immigrant community and for so many years they don't have the staff uh, to be able to uh, translate these uh, tips. Exactly. All right, we'll yeah. follow up. Thank you, Jeanette Reyes. When we return, I'll talk to Telemundo Washington's Moises Linares about the most talked about topic this week, the 47-count indictment against FIFA officials. Coming up next on Hispanic Agenda, here on News Channel 8. Welcome back to Hispanic Agenda, I'm Alejandro Negron. The world of soccer was shaken Wednesday morning by a 47-count indictment by the U.S. Justice Department against important figures of the sport, including officials of soccer's world governing body, FIFA. Charges include racketeering, bribery, money laundering, and fraud. The Swiss government also announced a criminal case against members of FIFA. Let's discuss the details and your reaction with Telemundo Washington's sports anchor, Moises Linares. Moises, welcome to Hispanic Agenda. Finally, you're here. Alejandro, thank uh, you for having <laughs> me. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. You know, we've, we've been wanting to get you on the program. Uh, you know, talking about FIFA, I guess the, the question that I most, uh, most uh, saw online on Facebook and Twitter is what took so long? Evidence, evidence, and people to be able to talk against FIFA. Somebody who had evidence and they found them. This goes way back to 2013 and years before that. Sure. Chuck Blazer, ex-secretary uh, of CONCACAF, the governing body for North and Central America. And South America. Mm -hmm. he, 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 uh, he actually decided to become an informant because he was caught in a corruption scandal as well. So in order for him to get out of that hole, or make a deal. The FBI cut him a deal and said, you become an informant, and we're going to take down these people who needed to be taken down. And it finally happened after collecting enough evidence to put a case against them. And, and let's talk about those people in just a second. But first, uh, let's get to what are they accused of doing, uh, w w these people that, that were charged? Uh, basically, there, of. Uh, there's, uh, many, there's many, bribery, there's many charges, but bribery, favors. buying mm. votes for the World Cup, and that's where you have your issue, right? We're talking about the World Cup, 2010 World Cup. Mm -hmm. People coming out saying, and there was reports prior to this of reporters saying there was votes bought, and that's what gives you the World Cup, mm -hmm. right? One vote can make a big difference. We're talking about if you go 13, 13 to 8, mm -hmm. you win by five votes, then you have a World Cup. People wait, countries wait years, decades to have a World Cup. The U.S. has been waiting almost 30 years, 94. They wanted to host the 20. 22 World Cup, and as you know now, is Qatar the country who's going to be hosting that World Cup on a very controversial manner. A very controversial manner because not only the average temperature in, in summertime in Qatar is 122 degrees, there's also issues of infrastructure. Uh, a lot of people question if that country even has the infrastructure necessary to hold uh, a world-class event such as the, the, the Mundial. We're talking about World Cup. We're talking about uh, workers' rights, human rights violation. All of that is being under investigation. That's a separate investigation to what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. Let's not confuse those two things. We're talking sure. about uh, FIFA and uh, the Swiss officials are investigating how did Russia and uh, Qatar obtain those two World Cups? And that, that investigation is It's completely uh, separate, separate to what's going on Swiss with the government. FBI. Sure. The reason why the FBI puts their hands in is because we're talking about U.S. banks uh, wiring, money wiring, that, mm -hmm. are, that is going through the United States. And that's the reason, that's the one thing they needed in order to become involved. Mm -hmm. And they found that now the big issue is, is Seb Blatter, the president of FIFA, going to mm -hmm. be charged with anything? Up to this point, they have not uh, let anybody know if he's been under investigation, but most likely he will be, and this is the first step to get to him. I mean, most people uh, watching this say that 
this is the guy. He's the one controlling everything. Uh, why hasn't him? Uh, why hasn't he been charged? And what's going to happen uh, with Seth Blatter? He's the maestro, as right. some might say, right? But up to this point, they're not going to release that kind of information. They're still digging. And what do you need in order to get to the top guy? You need people who are going to be able to you know, throw him under the bus and say, you know what, he is involved, he knew about this mm -hmm. stuff. And it's hard to believe that the president, after being there since 1998, mm -hmm. does not know what's going on sure. in his own uh, government. All right, Moises Linares from Telemundo, Washington. Thank you so much. And watch uh, Moises every afternoon on Telemundo, Washington. Coming up on Hispanic Agenda, Peruvian and Cuban chef Victor Albizu shares a recipe that you'll want to include in your next asado. We'll be right back. Back to Hispanic Agenda. The Rami Awards will once again be held at the Walter E. Washington Convention Center on Sunday, June 7th. The Rammies honor the exceptional ability and accomplishments of the hard working individuals and organizations of the Capital Region's restaurants and food service community. One such hard worker is Chef Victor Albizu, who's here with us. Thank you for having me. From Del Campo. And you're very busy as we were doing that intro. Yes. We saw all your staff. Oh, we got stuff going around. on. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on. We have a lot of stuff going on. Like a good on Latin kitchen, there's way too much. To even handle, but we're, we're going to do it. We are going to do it. What are we making today? Uh, well, we're going to go to Taco Bamba first in Falls Church, Virginia, which is All our right. taqueria right next to uh, our Latin market, Plaza Latina. Um, it's uh, where we do some really fun traditional and non traditional tacos. Okay. It's, a, it's a really fun environment and great food, a lot of great flavors. So, so we're going to do a chicken, chicken tinga taco? Chicken tinga, and uh, we're going to do a grilled guacamole. A grilled guacamole. Yes, sir. We'll this start with different. the guacamole, okay. right? So uh, we grill everything in our guacamole okay. from uh, the citrus to the avocado. So we have grilled avocado right here. All right, uh, we're going to go in with uh, some grilled chopped poblanos and jalapenos. Well, I'm going to go ahead and try a little bit of that guacamole, yeah. too. Some grilled uh, onions. Let me see. Cilantro. The cilantro, uh, it would be weird if you grilled it, so mm. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that. Some grilled tomato. All right. Uh, and you can go ahead and squeeze some grilled lime in here, and you'll have your sure. guacamole. All right. That's all it takes, but just make sure it's nicely grilled. There we go. And we mix it up. There we go. You look like a strong guy. Let's get a good squeeze <laughs> on there. All right, here we go. All right. Here's your guacamole. How, how many limes? You're good right there. You, okay. I like it a little bit. Well, lime, so. there we go. So now, uh, you can put this on your taco. You can put this on anything. People mm -hmm. love this. They always ask for the grilled guacamole, and we have chips. And I might as well just do this thing for you. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm not going to feed you. All right. OK. <laughs> So uh, with that, we're also going to do a chicken tinga taco. A traditional mm. chicken tinga is a, to, uh, a tomato based. This is really based. good. Thank you. Thank you this very much. This is really much. good. We uh, can taste the grill on the on the. I hope so, yeah. The There's a nice smokiness, right? Yes. So uh, moving on to the chicken tinga, we're doing a, a chipotle tomato based sauce, right? Where we, we're going to add this, going to sparkle a little bit, All right? There we go. All right, you can hear that. Mm. Absolutely. So we get that going. You already smell the chipotle in here. You probably can't see me, which is OK. Um, and we're going to add the shredded chicken breast. And these aren't special effects, ladies and gentlemen. No, no, This no. is real. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, so we're going to go ahead and add the, the uh, chicken breast okay. uh, to the sauce. So the chicken tinga, tinga it's very refers, healthy. It's very healthy. Tinga refers to a way of preparing the meat. Really, it's really it has to do it's with the sauce. It's not a part of the chicken. Right. So okay. we basically take uh, uh, braised chicken breast, which we mm. slow poach with. Everybody loves. You know, uh, chicken breast is very healthy. Mm -hmm. So we shred it, then we add it to this wonderful sauce. And we add some uh, sauteed onions also right. as well. I can definitely tell why you're, um, I think you're, uh, this year you're going to be chef of the year, or you are one of the finalists. Well, yeah, the Rammies the the right? have been very kind and nominated me second time as second chef time. of the year. Um, hopefully, um, you know, Hopefully we'll bring it home. You know, it's it's much more of a team effort. Um, the Rammies are a great. Uh, it's a great association. Very supportive of all the restaurants in the city. June seventh um, at the Walter E. Washington Convention Center. Convention Center. Center. Yes, right around the corner from Del Campo. Oddly enough. All right. um, and so this is the chicken tinga taco. I'm going to go ahead and give this to you. I'm going to keep we eating. We have some spicy sauce here. If you'd like to put on it. I, would I want like you to, to get really messy because you have a nice suit on and. Hey, you know, if you don't get messy while eating Latino food, that's you know, what we're talking about right now. Exactly, so that's okay. Mm. There we go. Mm. So that's the actually that's the taco stand right there. That see that thing right there you just did? That's when you know what you're doing. That's what you do when you eat tacos. See? 
I know what I'm doing. There you go. Making tacos. All right, what else are we making? So we're going from here to South America. All right. To uh, my take on a traditional steak, which is a matambre. In, in, in Argentina, they do like a rolled skirt steak. They call it matambre. Um, but which is basically kill your hunger. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, but the steak is usually braised or boiled. Here at, at Del Campo, we grill everything. So okay. from the bread to the, to the salt to the oil to everything you can imagine, all the desserts are grilled, everything's grilled. So what you have going on right there is a rolled and grilled skirt steak. This, this skirt steak was... Um, what is that seasoned with? So inside of here, mm -hmm. we have Parmesan cheese, rosemary, wow. uh, mustard, burnt onions. We like to burn onions mm -hmm. and we slather it in there. It gives us this really interesting texture and flavor. And this is the final product. And we only have 30 seconds left. Yes, this is the final product. And we're gonna go right into the box. You have your torch there, right? I do. You carry that wherever you go, so be careful. That's right. So go ahead and flame it up. Even more smoke. This adds this a really nice level of uh, herb smoke. We add dried rosemary, dried oregano, dried thyme. So it's, uh, you know, it gives us fruit of the country type of flavor to well, it. Well, we really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. The food is absolutely great. Awesome. Check out Del Campo and good luck at the Thank Ramis you so much. Thank you very much. On the 7th of June at the Walter E. Washington Convention Center. We have to go. Please check out our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. Tune into Telemundo Washington for the Spanish version of this program. And be sure to join us again next week here on News Channel 8. We're on fire, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hi. Thank you.